Hey guys, uh, Brian from Retread Paintball again today, and I thought it might be fun to talk about refilling your your air tanks from a scuba tank. Um, this is really handy for me because I demo and test so much stuff that I run out of air really, really quickly. Or when I'm trying to troubleshoot somebody's gun or tech somebody's gun or, you know, tune somebody's gun or something. Um, even a large, I mean, I started just having one or more large, like 90 or 88 cubic tanks, and I've got a couple here. Um, so filling those up, uh, has been, uh, and I know I've got a ninja reg on a gorilla tank, but you know, hey, I love ninja regs. <laughs> um, it's, it's a pain in the butt. Um, you know, I used to try to get slick and go to the paintball field and when they weren't really looking or paying attention at the air station maybe filling up five or ten smaller sized bottles um you know while i was there and some fields they didn't care you know and some other fields were like let me see your air tags for every one of your tanks and you have an air tag for one tank and you have to cut the air tag off if you want to use a different tank and just you know on and on just ridiculous so I got tired of that, and um, I bought a used um, scuba tank. So what's nice is you get a ton of air, and, uh, you know, I fill it up once. It lasts me, you know, depending on how much I'm using, a couple of months probably of filling smaller tanks if I'm smart about it. Um, you know, I've only used this once the other thing you can do with it is, and I've only done this once, is you can use it to fill tanks at the field. Now, most fields, you know, won't let you bring your own scuba tank to fill your tanks because uh, they want to charge you five bucks or whatever for all day air. So I understand that. And also, it's a safety issue. Um, you don't want a fully pressurized tank like this sitting in the back of somebody's car in 113 degree heat and potentially having a problem. So I get that. Um, you know, but for scenario games or something, you know, it might be fun to have one of these out on the field so that you don't have to walk all the way back to an air station to fill your tank. Um, or it's nice if, uh, I don't recommend this for people, you know, for everybody, but, um, I have back in the old day before there were a lot of fields. <laughs> I mean, we're talking in the eighties, um, you know, we would play what we would consider it to be outlaw now, which is a bunch of guys out in the woods shooting at each other. And there's no referee, there's no chronoing, there's no, you know, regulations of any kind, whatever. Now, some of our friends in our group do play like that now. They found a place where someone allows them on their land, you know, and you can play. But if someone gets hurt, it could be real, real problematic for the owner of that property or um, anybody involved with organizing it. So, you know, we just, I caution against that. Um, there, especially where we live here in LA, there's plenty of fields. But I get it. I understand why people would do it. It does, it will save you some money. Um, you can bring your own paint so you don't have those issues. So I get it. And in those kind of cases, they would do something like this. Bring one or more scuba tanks out to fill their tanks in between games. So now the thing to know about scuba tanks is a standard scuba tank like this one. Um, even though it's this huge tank, it's only a 3000 PSI tank. So you are not going to be able to fill uh, 4500 PSI tanks um, all the way up. You're just not. Um, there's just, you know, there's just not enough pressure in here. Uh, now, what some people will do is there are ways, and you can Google it. Yeah, Google it. There are ways to daisy chain, I think, three or more tanks together. Or to use some kind of a ram booster, which you'll see some shops actually have. In order to boost the pressure of this up to 4,500 PSI. So then you could technically fully fill a 4500 psi tank um and uh and not have a problem with that not that you won't have a problem it's just you'll see that if you get one of these um 
you're just you're only going to fill one of these like so much you're, you're going to fill it to 3000 psi because it's only it's only 3000 psi tank to begin with so that's great i mean for testing for demoing and even for you know uh like i said like outlaw ball <laughs> out on an illegal field it's probably enough um and if you have larger tanks like this is a this is a 90 this is a nine this is a 90 sl tank and this is an older uh, 88 uh, Gorilla tank. And um, you could fill those. And if you're smart about it, like it can last you a, a long time. So, and what do I mean by that? Well, if you're using smaller tanks and you fill these smaller tanks, these are 3000 PSI tanks. So you'll see this will actually fill this up no problem to 3000. Um, you know, this was, this was just filled the other day. Um, and I, I know it's at 3000 PSI, but the problem is, you know, there's, this is just a tank. It's not a compressor. Um, so it doesn't, you know, every time you open this valve, you're going to be going down from 3000 PSI down. Now you're at 2800 PSI, 2500, 2600, 2400, whatever, you know, there's just, um, you're limited to the pressure that is stored in the tank to force it into the bottles you have. So if you're filling a tank like this, you'll notice if you fill it once, you'll get to 3,000 or just under, maybe. And then uh, the next time you fill it, if you empty it and fill it again, you'll get to 2,800, 2,400, 2,000 or something like that. And you may be able to fill it to 2,000, you know, three or four times or something. But eventually, I mean, every time you open this valve, you're losing pressure in this tank, and that can't then drive um, air into other tanks. So, um, with that in mind, some lessons that I learned and how to maximize that is, if you have large tanks, fill those first. Because, um, and even, like, I like using these sometimes because um, even if you go to a field where they have a compressor, sometimes the compressor is only filling to you know, 3,500 PSI or 3,000 PSI, even though you're at the station that allows it to fill the 4,500 because the pre compressor's running all day and it's not catching up and it's not building up the pressure enough in the tank to be able to do a 4,500 PSI fill. Um, or what I hate even worse is you get to a field and the people who are managing the field have waited too long to turn the compressor on so again, people are then, you've got a line of 50 people trying to fill their tanks and that compressor is just never going to catch up all day. Maybe after lunch, it finally catches up, you know, when people take a break um, or at the very end of the day. But more often than not, I've seen where for whatever reason, whoever's managing the field forgets to turn the compressor on. It's so annoying. And then all of a sudden, um, even though you're at the 4,500 PSI station and you've got bottles that can handle 4,500 PSI pressure, um, you're only getting a fill of 3,000 or 3,500 at best, <laughs> or sometimes even less. So, but at least, um, so that's the pressure, but you have capacity. So even if this only fills to 3,000 PSI, here's your 68. So your 68, 68, uh, tank so you can see the difference here you've got that much more space to fill at 3000 psi so while this tank this tank's going to obviously it's going to run out faster um it's smaller it's lighter it's much nicer to have on your gun than this big honking thing but uh sometimes especially if you're running a spool valve gun or something that 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 just uses a lot of air you'll notice that um, even though that compressor or tank may only be filling the 3,000 PSI, you've got 3,000 PSI across a larger space. So, um, you know, I mean, it just would make sense, right? Like this holds more air than this does, regardless of what pressure it's filling at. That's, I guess, the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> and that was a long way of getting to <laughs> being able to say that. I apologize. But anyway, so what you can do is... Um, if you have larger tanks, fill those first and fill these ones last because this is easy to fill. So why waste your high pressure output on a smaller tank? 
So fill your bigger tanks first. Um, make sure those fill as much as possible. You know, like if this was all I had, I would fill, you know, like one, two, three, and then fill these two. And then, um, you know, if, not, if I even needed these, maybe like for testing this week, I know I'm not going to need the smaller tanks. I'm not even going to fill them because I'm going to save that pressure for the larger capacity tanks. And I have a bunch more. So like I could fill a bunch of uh, these higher capacity tanks and maybe not use these, you know, because uh, again, why waste the pressure on those? Or if you have a whole bunch, save those for last. That's the point. So another thing to know about scuba tanks is um, they come in steel and aluminum. The aluminum is going to be lighter. Um, you can get, see this has like a protective net covering on it, but they're fine without them. It's just kind of nicer if it's rolling around. Just protects it. Um, something that's different from these type of tanks is that uh, you do need to hydro, but um, you so these you only need to you, you, you hydro them every uh, four or five years depending on the tank and the the um, the the um, the specs of the tank itself. But these guys require a visual inspection every single year. So the visual inspection is like 10, 15 bucks or something and includes a fill. And usually places where you go, um, if you're filling air tank, it's five bucks, whether you're filling this or whether you're filling this or whether you're filling this, it's five bucks a fill usually somewhere in there. So, um, but figure that in as part of your equation that this needs to pass a visual inspection. So they're going to look at the outside of the tank. I believe they remove the valve and just kind of with the flashlight or something, inspect the inside of the tank for corrosion. Because remember, usually this is meant for a saltwater environment and any sort of imperfection or crack or leak or anything in there that gets saltwater in there is going to be bad, uh, ultimately. So they're looking for stuff like that. For paintball, you're not really going to see a lot of that. I mean, this goes from my garage here to my car to back, you know, to, to the store to get filled and back, and that's it. So I just had a visual inspection done on this. Um, it's like the second one I've had to do. Um, and it's like a, it, you know, so they'll, they'll tag it if I can lift this up here. So I got this one done at sport chalet. So they tag it when the visual inspection was done and they'll give you paperwork to tell you what passed or what didn't pass. But, um, then they know that, uh, it was done. Let's see. So yeah, I think, yeah, they either replaced the sticker the previous sticker I had, because it was also sports chalet, because the years, um, you know, so they know it was done in, uh, you know, July of uh, 2015. So July of next year, it'll be due again. And, um, you know, it's not really a huge, huge deal. So just be careful of it. This is, uh, you know, I mean, it's the, these high pressure things, it's a little scary, but you take care of it and, um, you know, don't bang it around. Don't let it slide around in the back of your pickup truck bed or in the back of your SUV or something. You know, um, I usually put it like in the front seat and, um, you know, on the floor and kind of maybe put a bag or something next to it just so it's not bouncing around. Um, if something hits this valve and, um, and causes it to crack or break, I mean, you've got a big problem. <laughs> you basically have a torpedo. <laughs> So um, don't, don't fool around with this stuff. But anyway, um, back to the fun part of it. So this one has a little cover over the valve here. And there's no gauge, you'll notice. I mean, you can get a device that will tell you what the pressure is and everything. And I make them usually show me what it is before, before I leave. Ooh, this one's dusty. It's been sitting out in the garage for a while. In the old garage. So anyway, um, you want to get a device like this for scuba tanks. And this will only work on your scuba tank. It won't work on your your uh, high pressure tanks. They do make a kit that allows you to fill other bottles from like a large bottle like this. Um, I kind of don't think it's worth it if you're going to do that. Put the money into something like this. You can get one used. Um, you know, if you shop around Craigslist and stuff, hundred bucks maybe, one fifty depending on the age, the condition. You know whether it needs to be hydro tested or needs a visual inspection or not um but shop around uh you'll find something i found a friend who i was playing paintball with who had a buddy that had a couple of these for sale and they were like brand new 
So I picked I picked one up, and uh, I wish I'd gotten both of them probably maybe you know just so I don't have to go to the store quite so often. But you'll see anyway. Um, you can get these. These are widely available like on eBay, and then you need a fill whip if it doesn't come with that. And this end of the fill whip is just like what you've seen on the fill whips at your air stations uh, at your field. So um, you put this on like so. And it has just a little, little knob that pushes into the back. It doesn't, this, this knob, it doesn't open anything. You'll see it just kind of rests there, on a little stop. And then this, um, there's actually uh, a seal in here. This hole is where the, the air comes out. So you're sealing right up against that. There's an O-ring in there. So it doesn't have to be super tight. You can see it still kind of moves a little bit. Um, so just kind of a little bit of 411 here. So you have a gauge that'll show you, you know, what you're outputting. And then you have a purge valve here and you'll see. So you want to make sure that purge valve is closed and then you can turn your primary valve on and you can hear it kind of coming out the end. So let's grab our largest tank here. It's this one. This one's already filled almost to 3,000 PSI. So, oh, by the way, every time, so in order to get the, the tank off, you need the purge valve because um, once this hose is pressurized, you're not gonna be able to get the, the hose off. So you purge what's in the valve here. And so you turn off the, the main valve, release the purge valve, it releases all the pressure that's left in the line, and then you can pull the hose off and you'll see that here in a second. But um, so basically, um, you're gonna crack this open, and it's gonna it's gonna fill to where it fills, and it'll sound just like how it does at the uh, at the field when you fill it, and it'll stop. And something to know also, if you haven't seen it before, is there's a difference between a hot fill and a cold cold fill. And if you were filling this from zero, like one of these tanks that has like nothing in it. Um, you'll feel the bottle will get hot as it's filling and um, as it gets uh, when it's hot like that um, if you fill it till it stops and you remove it you'll notice and you probably have seen this at the field where it looks like you're at 4,000 and then you walk back to your car or wherever you're staging and you put it on your gun or something and you look at it again and you're like hey it dropped like five six hundred psi or more what happened well you did a hot fill so the hot fill, um, you get, you'll get full pressure more often. You'll, you will get uh, full pressure on a colder fill, or if you do a slow, very, very slow, gradual fill, or you do a slow fill and then keep topping it off. But nobody has time for that on the field. And when you go to most shops, they won't do that. Um, I have known that at the scuba shops, I have seen at the scuba shops like Sports Chalet where they have a really nice compressor that if I'm willing to leave the tank with them for like a couple hours, they'll do a really nice slow cold fill and get the tank all the way to 4,500 PSI completely. And it's one of the only times I really see it get that way. Or if you have like this where you've got half of it already filled, it's not going to heat up as much going to 4,500 so you get more of you'll get more of that if I were at a compressor or if I had a the ability to fill the 4500 right now, um, this would do that. So otherwise, it can't. <laughs> it just it just won't on a hot fill. So even if you take it to some place with a nice uh, compressor or you go to the field and they're filling the 4500 psi, you'll see that on a hot fill uh, that's really fast where the bottle heats up, um, it will drop. The pressure will drop. Even if your gauge says 4,000 at first, you're like, oh, I got 4,000, yay. And you again, you walk back, put it on your gun or something, and you're like, hey, what happened? Like, do I have a leak? And no, you don't have a leak. <laughs> so that's something to know. So let's see this here. So I've got the valve closed, and this valve I'm going to open. And hopefully you can see this. All right, 
So you can see the gauge here is at 3,000. Now, for some reason, I'm going to purge it. I'm going to purge it. I turned off the valve and I purge it. For some reason, I've got a leak here that I didn't have before. And I'm wondering if it's just, I couldn't tell exactly where it was coming from. If it's coming from this valve, from the valve opening. Now there's special lubricant you can put on that. And I do have some, I just don't know where it is right this second. But if you've heard of Dow 55, there's like a Dow 100 <laughs> that's made for air systems. And that's what you would use on something. But you need to be very careful. Um, you don't want to get any petroleum products or anything. So be very, very careful. Let's see if I can do this again, if I can get it to seal. So you got to close the perch valve. There we go. Oh, it's still leaking a little bit. Where's it coming from? It's coming from the purge valve. Yeah, it's coming from the purge valve here. So I'll have to figure out why that's doing that. But you can see, even with that, this went up to uh, almost exactly 3,000 PSI. So... Um, and then with the purge valve off, I'm able to release it, release the, the whip. So there we go. Um, so that's how you fill from a scuba tank. And, uh, I hope that helps you. Um, I don't think these are more than like 30 bucks or something at the most, maybe even with the whip on eBay. And I'm going to have to open this up and see why it's leaking from there. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned or something, but probably an O-ring or something in there. Maybe that needs to be replaced. I've had this for a while, for quite a while, for years, and I never had any problems with it leaking before. So, But I haven't had this filled for a while, so maybe uh, something's up. Anyway, um, so that's, uh, that's how to fill your tank from a scuba tank. And um, if you're like me and you, 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 know, you need to tune a lot of markers and um, you don't have a lot of tanks to fill at home or... Um, you know, to keep it home in between the times you're at the field where you can get a good fill or, or you don't have a shop that's like, you know, 10, 15 minutes from your house where you can get some fills. This is a good, uh, good solution. So I've been really happy with it. I've been happy with the tank. Um, and uh, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's been very beneficial for me. And um, I thought uh, you might like to see it. All right, that's it. Thanks, guys. Bye.